Hello sir, good day. My name is Govin Barrera. I am your student from CS 10-8L from section A12. I am here to present my uh, my code for the practical practical exam. Sorry, please excuse my, my grammar. I am not so fluent when it comes to speaking in English. So let me first just uh, introduce, uh, explain the problem at hand. So we are tasked to get five ages of family member from the user as uh, user input but we should not allow the user to enter a duplicate age value and also we should provide the center value this is the mean value of the five age values so we will also need to use a, a five element vector array to store the values that the user will input so let me just clear my, my workspace uh, so this is the sample program run and just to show you that my my program works we will be um, we will be wait a second oops we will be entering the same uh, the same inputs here and it should also have the same outputs to see if it works <laughs> okay so let me just call the program okay so for h1 we should enter 20 7 for h2 and 20 for h3 and so by now we should uh, yes, there it is. We should receive a prompt saying that I cannot enter an existing value and that I have to repeat the due to repeat entering uh, an age value for age number three. So we should input four, age four should be seven. So we cannot enter that existing but we cannot enter that value seven because we already inputted it here in age two. So we should just finish this one. So as you can see, it is identical here in the sample program. So the output is also identical. We receive a 20 as the H1, 7 as H2, etc. and etc. So it also prompts the user that the center value among those five ages is 11 so my program works and uh, let me just maximize this one Sorry. okay so this is my my program my code uh, so the first line uh, it creates a frame for the vector so I've already made comments here to help me explain them so so this list variable here is actually a zeros a one row by five column vector array of zeros so it looks like this two, three, four, five. it looks like that so in here among these elements this would just be the frame where we could store the values that the user will input later on. Okay, so so we also have this variable here, n equals 1. n uh, indicates the, the number of, uh, I would say, the instance that the for loops has already looped. Okay, here in line 2. So in line four, we actually use a for loop for this program. So this numbers variable here is just variable for this one is to five. So it could be any variable. It could be age, it could be i, or anything. So this one to five here states that this for loop should repeat for five five instances. Uh, because we have this list of of zeros that we have to replace it with 
So under this for loop in, in line number five, we have this age input, which asks the user to enter an age. So this percent B here is another placeholder, uh, sorry, a placeholder to display the value N, the number of instance. So if this is the first time uh, that the program is run, it would enter enter age one. It will show that that uh, that prompt because it is the first instance that the user should enter a value age for the program. So you may also recognize that we use an S print F here instead of an F print F. Now that is because we are asking the user for an input. So this input function right here could only um, could only accept arguments uh, that are the data type that is a data type of a string so it only accepts string inputs and not other floats or not integers or something like that so we have to convert this n because n here is an integer so we have to convert n into a string so to do that and to print a we have to use sprintf for this function to work so the the user input will be will be assimilated by this variable age input okay next in line is is uh, line six which is the check uh, check what I would like to call the check uh, check line because it checks if the user input already exists in the list so we made use of this is member function so it takes in two arguments the first argument is the list or the array of vectors that we will that we will be the reference so this list right here is the the zeros that we that i already mentioned from before so it checks that zeros if the age input already exists within those lists uh, within within the list if this input already exists among those values inside the list so if if the if the input exists in the list it would show us a a boolean a boolean value true false one or zero and one indicates true zero is false so check here will be a value of 1 or 0 so again is member function this list is the reference and the age input is what we are looking for inside the list and it returns a 1 or 0 value and that value is assimilated into this check okay so the next one that we should uh, tackle is this seventh line because we made use of a, of a, of a while loop so this is um, it checks if this check variable here is one or if the age input uh, is within the list already that means that if check is one then the what the user already inputted is a duplicate of a number already existing within the list so if it is one then we should execute this uh, block of code from line 8 to, to line 10 so if what the user inputted already exists within the list then MATLAB should prompt a message saying that you cannot enter an existing value because it already exists within the list and it should also again ask the user for an input of an age value that stores it in the age input as well so uh, that's that is the code for the while but we would also need to update the check value of this new input that the user will enter because if we do not enter the check uh, we do, if we do not update the check value it would just be repeating itself 
this while loop over and over and over again and you would not be able to escape it or you would not be able to break the loop so we have to update the check so that it checks if again this input is within the list so if it does not exist in the list and, it, and if this check here becomes zero then we could proceed to this following uh, following lines of code so so assuming that the user entered a, a, a number that a value an age value that does not exist in the list already then we should proceed to line 12 which appends the user age input into the list into this zeros so right here I am telling MATLAB that from this list from this uh, five element vector array we should take the first row and the end the instance so that is the age number so it should um, it should replace the zero with the number that the, the, the user have inputted here in the list so it appends the user input to the list uh, respective of its uh, what do I or uh, respective to its uh, instance okay so then we we add an, uh, a, we add a one here to the end to uh, to proceed to the following um, to proceed to the following instances of the for loop so if this is my first instance of running the for loop then this would be list one one so it would be zero 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 then we would replace this first value because it is uh, list from it is the coordinate one one the row one and the column one represents this so if uh, for example I inputted an age of five then this would be this would replace this one by five the zeros and we add an n a value one to the n so that it would change the this one this placeholder to in to ask the user uh, to input another age for age number two okay so after that is done what well, after the for loop is already done already done for five instances uh, we will now be proceeding to line 15 um, so this is this variable here cval we have assigned it to the median of the list so this median function right here it takes the list so it does not matter the order it lists uh, sorry it it sorts the it sorts the values within the list in ascending order so this 20 7 4 11 27 so median the median function uh, oops sorry so the median function um, the median function arranges this sorry <laughs> the median function uh, arranges these values in ascending order so it will become 4 7 11 27 and 20 so the median in a five element vector array is the third uh, the third element of that array so the third element when it is already sorted is the 11th so the 11th value is returned as the value for the c value or the the uh, the center value of the the user inputs so this one here is just my old code it still works but this one is more sophisticated as, as you can observe it only it only takes a little bit of lines to pro to, to code but this one <laughs> it's a lot so this one still works but you would need uh, you would need to solely use uh, while loops and it could get pretty hectic if we if we do that but still it works so 
this one uh, let me just explain this one so this one is for the age 5 so if we input a, an age value for age 5 it checks whether or not this age 5 is equal to any of the the ages that you have previously entered so these two bars right here that looks like absolute value bars um, it checks whether or not this these conditions are true so if any one of those are true then you would proceed to the to this block within this um, within this this while loop until you enter an h value that uh, that is not identical to any of these ages okay so now that we have already finished the list and that we have found the median of the list, the center value, then we need to print the output. So here we use an fprintf instead of an sprintf. So fprintf allows us to format the printf function. And here we use the fprintf to, to display a prompt saying output. Uh, double colon this uh, these uh, backslash n signifies that MATLAB should uh, should break the line or to enter uh, so it is like uh, pressing enter uh, it tells MATLAB to to generate another line for the next command so uh, now the second fprintf in line 52 um, it just displays these lists so like what I said from before this percent b is just a placeholder for the values this one comma one this one comma two and etc so here in line 53 fprintf the center value is percent d so MATLAB, we are telling MATLAB that this percent D should be civil when it is uh, displayed in the uh, in the command window. So that's it for my code. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, let me just show. Okay, so here the output it shows that one. This backslash n. This is the backslash n, this empty break line here. And another backslash n so that the the first value, this one comma one, would be on a new separate line. And that's it. Thank you, sir.